Hello everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk a, a little bit about uh, some of the ideas from chapter one, um, a little bit about uh, some basics of the HTTP protocol, I'll show you some kind of nifty stuff and so forth. Um, and then we'll have some other videos uh, talking about some more uh, hands-on experience and all of that. Um, so if you made it through, uh, if you read through chapter one, you, you were able to understand it, um, that's great. Um, honestly, chapter one is kind of a kind of a drinking from the fire hose. There's lots of stuff in there. Some of it's uh, kind of technical and everything. Um, and and you know I don't really expect that uh, that you have a full handle on all of that, right? Because they introduce HTML, CSS, JavaScript, all that stuff together and so forth. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. Okay, so you know again, if if you didn't quite get all of it right off the bat. That's okay. We're gonna we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about that stuff. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, is this here. Okay, so um, what this is this this is uh, this is the ACM Association for Computing Machinery and IEEE model curriculum for an IT program. Um, and and what they show here is what they refer to as uh, as the the pillars of of an IT program, right? Um, so right off the bat, we see programming is in fact one of the pillars, right? And and again, you know, hopefully you understand that by now. I mean, at this point in the in the program and so forth. Um, but certainly, I do see a lot of students who will say things like, "Hey, I'm." in IT, I don't need to program. Well, you know what? It's one of the five pillars. Okay. So yeah, clearly you do need to program. Um, also, you know, there's databases, right? And a lot of what you do with databases, there's a lot of program, there is programming with that. So yeah, we can kind of claim databases as one of those too. Um, but take a look at this one over here, web systems, right? That's what this class is about. Okay, so this class is about um, dealing with systems on the web. That is, how do we create web pages? How do we have interaction? How do we deal with the client side? How do we deal with the server side? All of that, right? And that is heavily programming, right? So, you know, again, kind of gives you an idea of, um, of just, you know, how much programming really is, is part, of, uh, part of that field. Um, what I wanted to just start off showing uh, sort of the basics of, uh, of dealing with, uh, with this stuff from chapter one. Um, the good news is that the HTTP protocol is entirely text based. Okay. Um, and so what I mean by that is basically the, 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 the exchange between both the client, the web browser and the server, the web server, um, is effectively all just really in plain text. Okay. Um, so let me show you an example of this. Okay. So here what I have, um, I'm running, uh, I'm running Linux. It's actually a version of Kali Linux. Um, and you know, if you, if you've never used Linux and all, you don't have to worry about that. You're not, you're not responsible for this, but I do want to show you something that's, that's kind of neat. Um, Kali Linux actually is, is a, is a flavor of Linux that, uh, that is used by uh, penetration testers and penetration testers, just another, just a nice word or legal way of describing, uh, or, or a way of describing someone who legally hacks servers. Um, so if you continue on in the program and you take my ethical hacking class, uh, we talk all about uh, all about Kali and using the various tools and so forth. Um, so let me show you, you know, sort of one way of, of playing around with uh, with a particular with a server and, um, and hopefully we can kind of learn a little bit more about the uh, the HTTP protocol. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to actually open up a browser. And, um, and I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you sort of a really simple web page that, uh, that I created, uh, just for demonstration here. Right. So I'm just going to paste the, uh, the web link in here. Right. And there it is. Right. So hello from HTML, a uh, very simple web page for demo. Here's a cool meme. There's a picture, um, and, and so forth. Right. Um, and, and I, and I, and I do want to say, you know, this, I, this is nothing to disparage women and all of that. I support women. I support women in it. I, this was one of the first images that came up with thought it was kind of funny. That's why I used it. All right. Anyways. So, um, so there's our web page, right? 
but here's what I want to show you, right? I want to kind of show you how this stuff can, uh, can, can be used and, and really kind of how that process happens. Now, in the hacking class or sometimes in a networking class you might use something called uh, called wireshark which is a which is a full packet sniffer and it captures kind of all the different layers and so forth in terms of the communication and you know don't get me wrong it's great it does the job. I mean, it, it, it is, it is the tool for, for that kind of stuff. And certainly even as a web developer, there might be times where you'll need to, uh, you'll need to use it. Um, just to, just as an example, uh, when I was working, uh, when I was working in industry, uh, there was a point where, uh, where I was working, uh, my colleague, a colleague of mine and I were both working on a particular protocol, sort of, uh, a, a, a unique protocol that, uh, that we had created. My colleague was working on the server side, I was working on the client side, and we were trying to make sure that sort of documentation was where it needed to be and so forth. Um, and so we got to a point where uh, our client and servers weren't quite talking to one another, right? So, you know, I went to him, I said, look, and I said, I, I don't think you're sending the right kind of information, you know, and of course, he got a little defensive about this. He said, you know, he said, no, you're probably just doing something wrong, right? So what did we do? Well, we ran Wireshark, and we looked at, we looked at exactly what was going on in Wireshark um, and found out, well, it turned out actually he was wrong. His thing wasn't doing what it was supposed to do. So he had to fix his code and then off we go. Okay. So again, I mean, even as, even as a web developer, those kinds of tools are really handy, but honestly, you know, I'm not going to show Wireshark right now because frankly, it's just overkill. You know, it just gets to be too much. And that's part of what I, what I, what I saw, uh, what I see with chapter one, there's kind of a lot of stuff that they're throwing at you and everything. Um, it's a little bit heavier than, uh, than we really need to, uh, then we really need to delve into. All right. So anyways, let me, uh, let me just show you. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to go back over to, uh, to my console here. Um, and I'm going to use a tool called, uh, called, uh, netcat. So, uh, I just type out, uh, NC and, uh, and basically then what I'm going to do is, uh, is I'm going to start off and I'm going to tell it the uh, name of the server to connect to that is www.csee.usf.edu. Okay. So that's, uh, that's where I, uh, I want it to, uh, that's the name of the server that I want to connect to. And I don't use the, uh, the HTTP in here, right? And um, then, you know, if you've taken a networking class, um, and even if you haven't, right, the idea is that it's not enough just to specify a particular machine. We also have to specify the port number, okay? And by default, uh, web servers tend to listen, oops, on, um, on port 80, okay? So I'll put in uh, port 80. And then I'm just going to add a couple of, uh, just one other uh, little um, flag in here, the dash V for verbose. It gives me a little bit more information. All right. So, um, this basically tells, so, so this says to Netcat, Hey, connect to this particular server on that particular port. Right. And so I do that and notice it says, Oh, okay. We've got a connection. Um, here's the actual IP address on port 80 for HTTP. It is open. Right. And now I can interact directly with the web server. Okay. And so here is what my, what our browser actually does when, uh, when we add, when we enter in, um, this information. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab the rest of this part here and I'm going to say, let's see if I can remember it offhand, get, um, and then I want, uh, that. Okay. And, um, Okay. So I can say, uh, I can say that I want to, uh, that I want to get that particular page, right? So notice I have all the stuff, um, from the, uh, from the URL after the, uh, server, right? So the slash tilde P Ventura slash web slash simple HTML. Okay. So that's the first part, right? So, and, and there, it turns out there are actually a few different, uh, methods, um, for, uh, that web servers, um, allow us to, uh, allow us to use. So in this case, we're using the sort of the most basic of this, namely the, uh, the get request. Okay. Um, there are other ones as well. All right. So, uh, I can enter in, um, I can enter in that part. And, um, then what we also want to do. Okay. And from, whoops, 
Looks like we might have timed out there. I think we did. I think we actually got disconnected. Yeah. All right. So let me go ahead and run that again. There we go. And uh, then I'm just going to uh, to copy this back down and paste that in. Okay. And um, notice I did my get and uh, and it actually was able to uh, to figure out. Hey, yeah. The, here is uh, here's the actual code of the page. Okay. Now technically I kind of used an older version of a uh, of um, of HTTP. Um, for instance, if I kind of use the newer version of the request, namely 1.1. Oops, sorry, it's sort of missing a part here. Get and that, and then we can say HTTP slash 1.1. Right. Um, and notice now when I hit enter, I don't get anything back. Right. In fact, I have to sort of I have to sort of send a separate line. Um, and now I actually get back a different message. Right. It says HTTP 1.1 code 400 bad request. Why is it a bad request? Well, it's a bad request because with HTTP version 1.1, not only do I have to specify um, what uh, what the path is to uh, to the file, but I actually also have to specify a section called uh, called the host. Okay, so let me do this again. Um, again, I'm going to do my connection in like so, and I'm going to grab this whole thing here, uh, just like that, and paste that in. And so then I would send a host header saying basically a sort of where uh, where we were. So I can say w uh, dub dub dub. Oops, sorry www c s e e u s f dot e d u okay um oftentimes there are other headers that are sent things like for instance the user agent that uh and the user agent there we go we timed out um but the user agent uh sort of tells you about uh the the user's browser um very frequently you'll also have uh something like a referrer part of the header that will uh that will in fact show you uh that that should theoretically say uh the site that is in fact uh that is in fact um referring to that particular page. All right. So again, let me go back to here. And uh, so we say, okay, we're going to do our get request uh, like so. And then we'll say uh, host www c s e e u u s f e d u enter enter and there it is, right? There is, um, there is our page itself, right? That's the actual code. Well, it's actually a couple of things. Okay. First of all, um, here's the actual code of the page, right? And I can show you that by coming over to our browser. Um, most modern browsers, they give us the ability to do a view page source and you know, there it is, right? So we can see H1, hello from HTML, P, uh, this is a simple web page. Here's a cool meme. Um, there's the, uh, image stuff, etc. right? So again, let me go back over to, uh, to take a look at what we got. Yeah. Hello from HTML. This is blah, right? Here's a cool meme and, um, all of that. Now notice we don't actually see the picture. I mean, one is we're actually getting text, but the other thing is what happens with the browser is when it sees an image tag, what we see here, it makes another request to the, uh, to the server to say, Hey, give me that, uh, that image. And there's a couple of other types of files as well. Style information and so forth, um, is done the same way. Okay. So, so that's the actual code of the page. Okay. Now, realistically, this isn't the best HTML and, uh, in sort of the next video, we're going to kind of see about that and everything. Um, but nevertheless kind of gives you an idea. Um, but take a look at all this stuff here, right? All of this stuff here is additional information that is part of the HTTP response, right? So it says, oh, okay, hey, yeah, we're using, uh, we're going to use HTTP version 1.1, gives us a 200 code, which is, uh, which stands for okay, um, tells us the current date and so forth, gives us some information about the uh, server, including uh, the version of Apache and PHP that are running, uh, kind of tells us uh, information about the last time that resource was modified, um, the, uh, the amount of uh, the amount of bytes that we have um, and also the the type of content that we're dealing namely an HTML document okay so that kind of gives you an idea of um, of how this stuff works right I mean we basically are just passing in that is the browser itself is just uh, doing this stuff for us behind the scenes making get requests and so forth um, and then it's interpreting uh, again this textual information to render 
the beautiful web that uh, that you all know and love. Okay, so hopefully that kind of has uh, taught you a little bit about that stuff. And again, I said in sort of in some of the next videos and all, we'll look at uh, we'll look at a little bit more at uh, at writing our own HTML code and so forth.